All right, y'all, so I've been busy all day doing the hood and the uh, bed of this truck. Um, I was fixing the dent right here. Has two holes in it because I used the dent puller because it was kind of a good sized dent. And I'm kind of amazed at myself that I fixed the dent and got it this flat like that because I'm still a rookie. Oh, trust me, I'm still a rookie at fixing dents this big. Um, if they're smaller dents, I mean, of course, they're easier, but a dent like this that has a crease in it, kind of lost what to do. Um, the hood, this side isn't sanded. The other side is fully sanded. I fixed the crack. There was two cracks that I had in it in the middle, and um, yeah, so I've been at it all day. This truck, I don't know how many coats of paint it's had on it it must have had um so the original color original color was yellow actually it's probably white or yellow so i'm just gonna say it was yellow so original color is yellow and then somebody put some red primer on it why red primer? I don't know. But somebody put red primer on certain parts, not the whole truck, on certain parts of it. Um, then somebody put some gray primer. Then somebody put some green paint on the hood and on some other parts of the truck. Then somebody put gray primer. So I don't know what was going on. And then there was some parts were black. The bed was black. So... Uh, I'm I'm having to take off all this crap, which I I rather do it like that than keep on adding a million damn coats to this truck. But I mean that's fine. But I've been busy all day doing that. All right, as some of y'all know from the previous video, I did just finish the bottom of it. That doesn't lack paint. That just um, grit that's sanded off this bed. I know y'all can see this night sky right here, all these little bitty holes, and even some bigger holes. I'm not really worried about that. Um, I, I, all this, all this is actually rush reformer uh, that is not gonna fix these holes. I don't know. I might try to figure something out as far as those. I might try to find the same exact uh, bed and. Uh, Maybe cut a piece out. Maybe they, maybe I could order a piece of the bed and just replace this whole section in the front. Because the front section is pretty bad. This section isn't too bad. And this section, I guess, has its issues. But that's where we're at right now. I'm not going to worry about fixing dents like that or, you know, stuff like that. But, yeah, that's where we're at right now. All right, y'all, little story time. So... Here it is, Monday, January the 3rd, this past weekend, I've been in agreement with a gentleman for an inner passenger side fender. Um, the guy was selling the whole clip, the whole front end clip, which is uh, the left, right fender, left, right inner fender, the hood, the radiators, radiator support, the whole front end area, and the grill. The grill was messed up. Um, a lot of parts were uh, rusted through. They were sending it for 150, and I told him I just needed the inner fender on the passenger side because, as some of y'all already know, I cut a big section out uh, as a dodo to put in a new, a newer style, like OBS style um, AC system in it, and that didn't work out. Things weren't lining up. I was fabricating too much stuff. So I just went ahead and bought an aftermarket AC system for this truck. So now I have a big old hole that I need to fill up. So what I wind up doing is I went over there, I bought the inner fender for $60. It had rust spots. As you see it over there in the corner. Uh, let me get it for you. So this is what $60 gets you right here in Texas. Bunch of holes. This is actually half of the inner fender. And. Sorry. And. So 
So I would have hit a body for sixty dollars because I couldn't find anywhere else, couldn't find anybody else that'll sell me a part on the cheap. I didn't want to spend some more money just getting a new fender because that was going to be oh, close to two hundred bucks um, for a new fender after taxes and shipping and all that crap. So. I, I just went ahead and spent sixty dollars. I said, you know what? I just cut out this part, or I just use the whole thing. Just do a little bit of metal fab work to it. Well, that didn't happen. And what did happen was I bought the fender. I went over there. The guy had <clears throat> the guy had a, a beautiful seventy-two or seventy-one F one hundred. It was banana yellow, not really my color, but he had a 460 in there, stroked out to, he said, a little bit over 532. Man, this truck was nice. They cranked it over for me. Man, it, it that was one beautiful truck. But anyway, so I bought the Fender. Even though I had all this rust hole in, holes in it, I was like, well, I mean, I, I guess I'll just go ahead and buy it and just chop it up. Well... I really did have to chop it up and I made the exact cuts that I needed to actually weld on to the, my original fender inner fender and uh, that's what I'm taking care of right now so here we are doing that All right, I already went ahead and uh, cleaned all the rust off of the main spaces where I'm going to put the spot welds in. Uh, it's going to be like a minute and one spot welds. Um, eventually, I'll clean them up, go on the other side, and see uh, where I need to give a little bit of spot welds on. This side, I can't really reach, so I'm going to have to flip it over, clean the rust on the other side, and actually... Uh, do my spot wells from the other side. All right, so I already finished up the welds on uh, putting this these two fenders together. And now what I'm working on is I'm working on the bracket. I don't know where this plastic base came from, but I'm going to use it. Uh, I had to cut it on both sides. My battery is exactly 11 inches wide. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and make this maybe 11 and a half inches wide. Um, this is the original from the truck. And this is this one came from the donor fender. Um, so I cut, cut some off right here on the side. This is all rusted up. So I'm going to have to cut this. I have already made a line. So where I cut it. I, uh, I welded this, this metal piece on, so I'm gonna join them together just like this. And then afterwards, I'm gonna go ahead and put this uh, plastic part, this plastic base in here. So, I was in there like that. And uh, afterwards, I'm gonna put, probably put a, maybe make a metal bracket to hold the battery down. Not sure, but. I am gonna go ahead and chop off the top of this because it's a little too tall for the fender side right here and I'm gonna have to chop this off too uh, and then re-drill the holes, bolt it on and then bolt it on from the plastic down so to stay um, put on the fender. All right, so here it is, already installed. Um, no, y'all can still see it. It's by no means no professional work, but it'll get the job done. And um, like I said, this is a work truck. So here's how the battery tray came out. I still need to bolt these or at least cut it off or something with this extra. But what I'm doing, mess messing around with right now is uh, instrument cluster. And this thing is no help which is the the manual Chilton, I believe. Yeah, Chilton manual. Because as y'all already know, all the wiring is from an 88F250. 
So I'm having to come in here and of course get back on the wiring. I connected this already just to make sure the gauges were working, the gauges are working. And um, so I'm gonna have to go and actually detach detach these groups one by one so that I could go ahead and start transferring the wires to this. Well, I'll go ahead and close this one out because I know this one's about to start getting long again. So um, we'll just end it right here. Next video will be the instrument cluster wiring from the 1988 F-250 to the 67 F-100. So see you on the next one. Yeah, have a good one.